So this video is meant to be a few things. First of all, it is meant to be a somewhat of a review of the PNY GeForce GTS 450 that I did unbox a little while back. Okay, it is also meant to be a look at SLI performance with the PNY GTS 450 as well as the MSI Cyclone GTS 450. Now these are both very similar cards. I'm going to stop holding up the box and instead I'm actually going to hold up the PNY card itself. Now they're quite similar cards. You can actually see now that we have them side by side. They do use the same reference PCB design. Okay, so the biggest difference is the cooler. We did a cooler comparison, but remember, these cards will work just fine in SLI mode, so that's what we were able to benchmark them in. So I want you to have a look at my test bench here, and I'm just going to show you what I was using for this particular little video review. I've got a Core i7-860 running at 3.8 gigahertz down there, and that is with hyper-threading on. All right, I've got uh, 4 gigs of Kingston HyperX H20 RAM. Don't even bother trying to look at that. It's way in the back. It looks like this. I have a third stick here. Okay, so that's what that looks like. All right, then we've got a uh, Nasus motherboard, which is both SLI and Crossfire compatible, which was necessary for the testing today. And this is all running off an OCZ Vertex series SSD. All right, so let's have a look at all the cards that we ran with today. You can see we've got the GTX 480 in there as a reference point. Okay, we've got the 5870 as a reference point as well. So the whole point today was to see how does two mid-range or really value performance cards like the 450 or the 5770. So you can see we've tested with a single as well as with dual 5770s as well. How does two uh, more mid-range cards compare to a single high-end card from each vendor? And then how does the NVIDIA offering compare to the ATI offering? I also threw in the GTX 460 Cyclone Edition because I did have it on hand and it's such a popular card right now. I figured, okay, well, that'll be a good reference point for people as well. So stay tuned. I'm going to do boring benchmark graphs. And before then, I'm going to show you all the settings I was using in the games that we did test. One of the games we tested, obviously Crisis, is still a benchmark for optimal system performance under incredible load. If it can run Crisis really well, then typically it can run most games fairly well. Although that is changing. There are some fairly demanding games coming out these days. We're running at 1680 by 1050, which is a perfectly reasonable resolution for our mainstream level cards. But what you'll discover when we show you the graphics benchmarks, the benchmark numbers, is that some of the higher end cards do start to get CPU bottlenecked at that resolution and we don't see scaling even with more impressive graphics cards. Again, once again, this is mainstream cards that we're mostly having a look at, so I'm using all of the medium presets for Crisis. Here's the settings we used for Mafia 2, but I do want you to note one thing. The Apex physics engine here is off because I do have a Radeon card on the platform right now, but I did run it two separate ways. For all the NVIDIA cards, I ran it once with Apex physics on high and then once with it off. So the only time I'm going to compare against Radeon cards is with physics off. But it should be noted that this game does have substantial uh, gameplay innovations that rely on physics that really you're not getting the ideal experience from unless you have physics on. Batman Arkham Asylum, yeah, I know this game's not that new, but frankly, I don't care. I really enjoyed it, so I'm going to go ahead and benchmark it. Also, it serves as a reference point as uh, an Unreal 3 engine game, so that allows us to find out how these cards will compare against each other in a pretty wide variety of games. So these are the settings that we did use, and you can see once again here, I have hardware accelerated physics off, but I had it set to high with the supported NVIDIA cards. And so what I'll do is I'll show you again two points of comparison, one with PhysX off with all of the cards in the mix, and then one with high with only the NVIDIA cards. So in conclusion, uh, that was my second video review, and I had so many people requesting it, I couldn't help but do more. 
I guess there's not really too much to say. I mean, you've seen the numbers already, and really the prices haven't really haven't settled enough for the GTS 450 series cards to really make a clear recommendation in terms of FPS per dollar or some kind of a hardline measurement. But what we can see is that the cards do scale quite well in SLI. They do perform quite well for their price point. And uh, if you want to check it out here, I just hope you've all enjoyed this review of the PNY GTS 450 as well as the SLI running review. I mean, I guess it's uh, it's more of a review of both of these cards than only one, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And I also wanted to make a special note here in the conclusion that I totally forgot about before. I am running the absolute latest driver revisions for all of these cards. So that means the latest 260 download from the NVIDIA website, as well as Catalyst 10.9 for all of the ATI cards. So these are pretty much the most up-to-date numbers that you can get for any of these cards. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips, and I hope you've enjoyed our video review. Thank you.